right, for recording purposes, please, check your question, please. Compounds, let's try this question, please. Compounds A, B, and C all have the molecular formula C5H10, full stop. A and B decolorizes bromine water, but C does not, full stop. B exists as two stereoisomers, but A does not show stereoisomerism, full stop. Use this information to deduce a possible structure for each of the compounds A, B, and C and explain your deduction. Full stop. State the meaning of the term stereoisomerism and explain how they arise in compound B. All right, so let's get this done, please. Let's get this done. Look up. Let's get this done, please. All right, so let's start with what we know and see how we can get an answer. First things first, I have three compounds here. A, B, and C. Next up, you see they have what there? Molecular formula of what? C5H10. All right, so let's see this done. I'm having a C5H10. So that's my first task. Okay, so what next? They said an A and B decolorize its bromine. Now, hold on. I have, when you did your practical, when you did that bromine something, which of the homologous series decolorizes bromine? Was it just alkene? It was alkene and what there? Alkyne that decolorizes bromine. So if they say A and B decolorizes, that means most likely A and B are what there? Either alkene and alkene or alkyne and alkyne or alkene and alkyne. But whichever way, my first deduction or my first hypothesis or my first inference is that A and B are most likely alkene, alkyne. Keep it pending. Let's move on. They said, but C does not. Which of them does not? So C is an alkene. So see, I'm doing it that. So A and B is most likely alkene, alkyne. C is an alkene. Proceeding, they said B exists as what there? Two stereoisomers. Let me break it down to the simplest form. When we say stereoisomers, what we mean in the basic sense is your cis and trans system. Cis and trans. Now, if you remember how we do cis and trans, it's something that looks like this. Cis and trans looks like this. Something of this nature. Abby? Yes. yes. This is cis and trans system. Now, let's still get something right. Let's still get something right, please. Considering this formula, C5H10, please, can this be an alkyne? Huh? No. This cannot be an alkyne. This can be what there? An alkene. For an alkene, what is the isomer? Cycloalkane. You now see where A falls under. Cycloalkane. Remember, we said A was an alkane, and we know that the isomer of an alkene is what there? Cycloalkane. So we've gotten A. But keep it pending for now. Um, so, listen again. Initially, we said A and B should be what there? Either alkene or what there? Alkyne. We've just said alkyne is not possible. Abby? Yes, because of what there? The formula. So if that's, if that's what it means, that, what does it mean there? It means that what there? B, A and B are, are both what there? And kings. Or our kings. Double bond, please. It means A and B are both what there? Our kings. Because they decolorize what there? Bromine. So what kind of our king? It has now specified that B, is it B? Yes, it says B exhibits what there? Stereoisomerism. But C what there? But A does not show. So here's the thing. It means that B is an alkene that exhibits stereoisomerism, while A is still an alkene, but it does not do what there? Exhibits stereoisomerism. A and B are both alkenes. B is showing C strands. A is not showing C strands. If A is not showing C strands, what does it mean there? It's what? A straight carbon. All right, let's proceed there. All right, you said use the information. Okay, so let's get this done, please. So, first is first, we know that A and B are what there? They are both alkenes. That's what we know. While C is what there? An alkene. Why an alkene? It doesn't decolorize bromine water. So, which alkene will have C5H10? The cyclo of it. We just said that. So let's get a cycloalkene with 5. That would be, so A is therefore 
I'm having one, two, three, four, five. So I'm having one, two, three, four, five. That's a cyclo. Let me start now, chain. C H two, C H two, C H two, C one two, H two, C one two, H two. So here's an alkene that has one, two, three, four, five. C five, two, four, six, eight, ten. H ten. So therefore. Is what? Exactly what? Okay, it's A. It's, it's C. Sorry. 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 Right. So let me repeat this. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. It said C is the arcane, please. So C is therefore, C is therefore a cyclo arcane. That's one, two, three, four, five. So here, 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 here. One, two, H two, four. 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 So I have this. This now becomes a word there. Cyclo one, two, three, four, five. Ten, three. I have deduced C. I'm left with what there? A and B. Let's get A. For A, what will A be? A is an alkene. Now we said we know what is an alkene. But it said A doesn't do what there. It doesn't do what there. Exhibit stereoisomerism. So we are having an alkene that is not cis and trans. If it is not cis and trans, what does it mean there? It's a straight alkene so i'm having c5 it becomes one two three four five makes an alkene double bond so i'm having this 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 one two h2 four one two three h one two h h one two h h one two three and four so how do you name this uh, this is what one abby uh one two three four five five is what proof pent please pent pent one in or one pentine b is also an alkene that exhibits stereoisomerism so because what there cis trans concept so let's get um let's get b Let's get B. So B is an alkene that is a that is a stereo isomer. That means form a cis and a trans from this. So for my cis trans, my first case is to get these two carbons first and then complete it. Um, C5, so you can come, you can see. Um, C, of course, C, I'm having one, two, three, four, one more C here, five. So one, two, three, four, five. Complete this. This becomes one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. Sorry. Um, for this one here, excuse me, please. For this one here, we know how this should look like. Abby? Yes. For a C strand, so I'm having this. What I have on the board, please. Okay, let me let me make this H bigger. Having this. Please, what I have on the board, please. Is it a cis or a trans? Obviously, cis. We said for cis, the two hydrogen will be what there on the same plane like this. So it gives you cis. So cis what? This is cis. Cis what? How do you number? Which of them gives you the shortest distance to double bond is from left. So I'm having one, two, three, four, 
five. All right, so name this become cis pent five carbon pent what there double bond is on carbon two cis pent two what there in. So I have this. If you want to use this trans, it's still correct. If you want to use the trans, it's still correct. That's what I said. Deduce a possible. What's possible here? Cis is possible here. Trans is also what there possible here. So if if your neighbor is doing trans and you're using cis, both of you are what there correct. That's it. I have the max scheme. I have one of these max scheme there. For the max scheme, they give they they will give a question. They'll give list of possible answer. So while you're doing a cis, the next person is doing what there a trans. Both of you are what there correct. So that's how we get this done. That's how we get this done. Last thing there says, states the meaning of stereoisomerism. All right, copy down. Let me give you a definition of stereoisomerism, and then we can proceed with. So the next thing there says, what is stereoisomerism? Here's the definition, please. Stereoisomerism or spatial or spatial isomerism is a form of isomerism in which molecules have the same molecular formula and sequence of bonded atoms but differ in the three dimensional orientations of their atoms in space. Last thing that says, and explain how they arise in compound B. And explain how they arise in compound B. What would you say? Huh? Read it see. How? And explain how they arise in compound B. What would you say? Uh, so you can just say, give them a simple man's concept. We said, we now say, for stereoisomers, there are basically two types, which are what and what there, cis and trans. And hence, B becomes a cis structure. So that's how it arises in B. And now, since B is a stereoisomer, then it is either a cis or a trans structure. So hence, you have cis. That's just like um, a very simple way of putting your answer. All right, so that's that for that. Let's proceed.